Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at scary things people witnessed. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. I was walking back to our camping spot in a fairly remote Christian camp with my friend down a trail I knew like the back of my hand. I grew up just down the hill from this trail and have walked the trail hundreds of times. This time though, it was pitch black and we only had a lighter to be able to navigate. About 500 feet from the tent and we walk along a part of the trail that has a hill that rises above it and above that hill the trail curls back into itself and our campsite is right there. As we get to this part in the trail, I hear a loud thud sound in the leaves, but I first wrote it off as a bird on some loud leaves. Then I hear very distinctly the sound of an animal running up behind us. The sound stops abruptly and then suddenly it lands above us on the small cliff edge directly above us. Mentally, I was thinking it was a deer that jumped up the hill. It was about a 20 foot jump, so I knew it was a big animal. My friend struggled to light his lighter, but when he did, what I saw will forever be burnt into my brain. Up the hill directly above us was a set of large cat eyes. I knew immediately it was a mountain lion and grabbed my friend by the shirt and quietly told him to not run. This was not my first time seeing a mountain lion, but it was the first time I had one staring directly at me only 10 feet away. We slowly kept walking up the trail and it slowly followed us until it got to a part in the trail where thick bushes prevented it from following us up the hill. However, we now had about 200 feet to walk to our tent and we had to walk back towards the mountain lion's direction. We couldn't see it at this point but could see the trees our tent was under. With about 100 feet left, we ran to the tent as fast as we could and made into it with that incident. Once in there, we found a flashlight and started watching out of the tent and within a minute, the mountain lion walked into the beam of a flashlight. It circled our tent for about half an hour. We watched it lay down and groom itself roll around on its back and generally seemed just curious about us. It went from being the scariest situation of my life to just watching a beautiful animal being itself in its habitat. Are you kidding me? Thank gosh we don't have mountain lions here. Holy! But we do have big spiders here. I guess the only thing you should not do is run, right? Because it will chase you. Like always have your eyes on it kind of thing. Woo! The last time I had COVID, it was pretty bad. High fever on and off for days, extreme fatigue, confusion and breathing problems. I nearly died, but I started to come out of the worst after a week or so. It was about two weeks into it, after the fever had subsided, but well before I was off of bed rest. It was about 2 a.m. and I couldn't sleep, so I was lying in bed reading. At 2 on the dot, I suddenly heard the sound of my grandma's grandfather clock chiming the hour. I glanced at my phone. Yep, 2 a.m. It took me a moment to realize that we don't have possession of my grandma's clock. We don't have any kind of clock that chimes like that. But I was hearing it very clearly, coming from our living room. It didn't sound close to me. It sounded exactly like it would be coming from the other room. I know that this was an audio hallucination brought on by the illness or the medicine. I've never experienced anything like that before or since. My husband thinks I dozed off and was dreaming, but I was wide awake. I remember looking at the clock on my phone. The sound was so clear and perfectly natural, not distorted at all. It was very disturbing to hear my dead grandma's clock suddenly chiming like that. <gasps> That's scary. Dude, that is scary. I mean, this person is like mentally strong for them to be like, yep, it's not real. Because if that was me, I'd just be like, this house is freaking haunted. Grandma, where are you? Why are you haunting the house? One day I was happily brushing my teeth when I see a shadow over my shoulder. Figured it was my husband. Once I'm done, I go to his office in the next room, but as soon as I'm about to leave for the corridor, he shows up with an alarmed face. I tell him he can go brush his teeth now, since he was waiting in the bedroom a little before. He looks even more alarmed and tells me, I just came to our room to ask you what did you need that you just stood silent behind me by my office door a minute ago. I did not sleep well that night. No, no, no. The husband pranked her. Men love to mess with us like that. You know what? I would totally do this as a prank. <laughs> right, just stab behind someone and not say anything. And then, you know, just run. And then come back and be like, what the hell were you doing in my room before? Why were you standing silently behind me? Me and my cousin used to rent out a one-bedroom apartment while in uni. The door to the bedroom was on the left of the beds. We always kept the light in the hallway open and kept the door open. One night, I woke up from a bad dream, looked up and saw someone standing in the door. Clearly a tall skinny dude but couldn't see the face. I thought it was my cousin until I realised she was not six feet tall. I noped inside my blanket and forced myself to fall back asleep. Next day, my cousin said she had a dream and saw someone standing in the door. That was enough to freak me out and we changed apartments. So many people have these kind of stories where they live in a haunted house and they all have like the same dreams. Like what the hell is up with that? What the hell is up with that? 
And this is pretty out there, but when I was a child having an asthma fit, my mother gave me some medication, but it got worse, so she gave me more medication. But the two aren't supposed to mix. I started tripping balls as a three-year-old trips, I guess, and saw a skeleton woman in a black robe. I started hysterically screaming, and my parents had me sleep on a cot in the hallway with the lights on. I kept referring to her as Asmona. My guess is from my mum mentioning the asthma medication and me moaning or something. Little kid stuff. Flash forward eight years or so, different house, different city. I was getting out of the shower and looked in the mirror. It was Asmaina. I screamed and climbed into a bunker and covered myself with blankets, freaking out until my parents found me. My best guess is it was a fog in the mirror that somehow looked close enough to what I hallucinated as a toddler that it unlocked a repressed memory and caused me to panic. I tried to tell my parents about it, but they both just laughed and said I was making up both incidents. Oh, are you kidding me? If my kid said something like that, I would not think they're making it up. You know, we're moving. All right, okay, pack your bags, we're going. Ain't no way am I going to be like, you're just imagining things. Get over it. Nope, nope, nope. We're getting out of here. The night after my mother died, I was consoling my younger sister in our living room. She was crying almost nonstop. We had a wall full of family photos all framed in the living room. My sister finally starts to calm down and we are just casually talking about our mother. Suddenly one photo of me fell to the floor, followed a few seconds later by a photo of my sister. It was almost like the nails were pushed flush into the drywall when I went to put them back up. Oh. Is the mom trying to tell them like it's fine, stop crying? Or like what's the mom trying to tell them? <laughs> A man walking down the street with a mask and a bat while my friend and I were on a late night stroll. We never sped walked so fast in our lives. <gasps> what the hell? They still sped walk? Bro, I would have ran, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, this just reminds me of an incident where me and my friends, we were just walking down a dark alleyway and for some reason there was a swing there. A small swing. And we just looked at the swing and one of us were like, oh, that's so cute. There's a swing here. And I'm like, what if it just starts moving right now? And all three of us booked it. It just takes one thing to freak everyone out. But seriously, why would there be a swing there? It was like a swing for a little kid. Two types of people, honestly. My friend thought it was cute. I thought it was creepy. I was like, hell no. She was like, oh, there's a little swing here. <laughs> Really? To be fair, it was at night as well. That's why I was like, that's freaking creepy. One time I was home alone and I was looking for my camcorder and I couldn't find it anywhere. I remember climbing into my bed to check the wall plug next to my nightstand where I would sometimes charge it, but it wasn't there. 10 minutes later, I come back into my bedroom and the camcorder was sitting on the corner of my bed pointed towards me and the red light was on and it was recording me. I ran out of the house and called 911. The police checked everywhere and no one was in the house. I still have no satisfying explanation. <gasps> hey, but this happens to everyone. Like, you're looking for something. You know, you check everywhere. You check everywhere, right? I'm telling you. You check everywhere. And then it's just right in the center of the table. Like, what? Like, what? What? <laughs> what is this? Like... Is the freaking universe glitching or is there like a parallel universe? What is going on? Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.